click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have understood about the Lee Chandler's principle and in that case we have got to know that um, uh, whenever at chemical equilibrium we apply certain kind of parameters like suppose if we are talking about pressure, volume, temperature, concentration. So if we change this kind of parameters then obviously we could find a change that is the reaction could be turned into a forward reaction or the reaction could be turned into a backward reaction. So related to that we are going to talk about what is the effect of pressure as well as the volume on a reaction which is exhibiting a chemical equilibrium. So now let us talk about it. So friends, so here we are now going to talk about what is the effect of pressure as well as the volume on a particular reaction that is exhibiting a chemical equilibrium. So for that, suppose if we are talking about pressure and volume, we know that uh, if we increase the pressure or either we uh, increase the volume, obviously the forward uh, reaction or the backward reaction can be obtained whenever a particular reaction is in equilibrium. But there is a certain condition. Suppose if we have to obtain a particular forward reaction or suppose if we have to obtain a uh, backward reaction so as to get a product or so as to get a particular uh, reactant back so we do such kind of uh, changes in pressure and volume so here we are going to talk about the the change in uh, pressure and volume that could lead to uh, obtain a forward reaction or a backward reaction so for that we have to uh, basically we have to recall what we have uh, learned in our previous lecture and that is basically Lee Chandler's principle so that is what we are going to talk about here but uh, let me explain this thing uh, when it comes to uh, pressure and volume obviously we uh, know the ideal gas equation that is PV is equals to NRT and in this case suppose we are talking about the uh, equilibrium uh, chemical equilibrium for the gaseous reactants which are giving us a gaseous product so this kind of change in pressure and volume can be appreciable it will be observed in a gaseous reactant as uh, so as to obtain a gaseous product but it is not observed in uh, the solid reactants and the liquid reactants so this is what i am going to talk about here so suppose if we are talking about a gaseous uh, reaction then uh, the main thing that we observe is that is the change in the number of moles of of uh, the uh, reactant as well as uh, of the product so suppose so now we are concerned with delta n and what is delta n it is nothing but it is the difference between the uh, number of moles of product uh, and that is basically the gaseous product that is obtained and uh, the number of moles of the gaseous reactant so here i am going to represent it that is the delta n it is nothing but the number of moles of gaseous product minus the number of moles of the gaseous reactants. So this is what the main thing that we are concerned with. So, so here because of the change or because of the observation of delta n we could determine whether the reaction uh, should be a forward reaction if we change the pressure in, in increasing way or if we decrease the volume so thereby we could uh, basically we could predict whether the reaction could be in forward reaction in terms of condition if we increase or we decrease pressure and volume so this is the thing that we are going to talk about so with respect to this thing let me give you three examples so that we could understand what is the effect of pressure and volume on a particular chemical equilibrium or a reaction that is exhibiting chemical equilibrium so the first reaction is explain over here suppose uh, this reaction whenever the H2 uh, is combined with that of uh, I2 and it is a basically it is a reversible reaction where we could obtain that is two moles of HI so in this case uh, we see the value of delta n that plays a very vital role over here so if we observe that is the value of delta n in this case is as the uh, delta n it, uh, elaborates that uh, it uh, gives us a data that is the difference between the number of moles of uh, the gaseous product and uh, the number of moles of the uh, reactant mixture so this is the number of moles of the gaseous product that we have obtained and that is basically two moles so two minus and the total number of uh, the reactant uh, uh, moles or uh, the molecules that are been participating or that are basically in the reactant side is basically two moles here it is one mole of h2 as well as one mole of i2 it total makes of that is two moles uh, of the reactant mixture so therefore two minus two it gives us the delta n which is basically zero 
So whenever uh, the delta n is it has been found to be zero, then it has been uh, it has been predicted that uh, there is no effect uh, of pressure and volume. Even though if we apply a, a high pressure or even though if we that is if we increase the volume, still there would be no effect on it, and that's the reason that the reaction would remain in an equilibrium position only, and therefore we can't uh, that is uh, make the reaction to be a forward reaction or to uh, and we can't convert it into a backward reaction. So in this case, basically we could say that there is no effect of change in pressure and volume so this was an example where delta n which was for uh, which is found to be zero in this case basically there is no effect of uh, pressure and volume so now let us talk about the second one and uh, let us see that what is the effect of pressure and volume on it so the second reaction that i'm going to uh, that is uh, going to elaborate in this case is basically a decomposition reaction so suppose we have that is pcl5 and that on decomposition obviously we know that uh, the phosphorus pentachloride which on decomposition it gives that is phosphorus trichloride that is pcl3 along with that of uh, that is cl2 so this is a particular reaction that we have mentioned over here and suppose if we have to find out the value of delta n so it is very much easy to mention about this thing that is uh, if you observe uh, the delta n or if we observe the uh, number of moles of the gaseous product then we'll get to know that is uh, this is one mole of gaseous product that is uh, one mole of uh, pcl3 along with that of one mole of cl2 so total it makes uh, the number of moles of the gaseous product it is found to be two minus the total number of moles of the reactant molecules in this case it is only one mole of reactant molecule that is pcl5 it has been uh, uh, it has been utilized so as to give us pcl3 and cl2 so therefore we could say that is uh, the number of moles of uh, the uh, reactant molecules is basically one so in this case we could find that is uh, the number of moles or the difference between uh, this two number of moles of the product and the reactant it has been found to be one so n is equals to one or we could also say that as uh, delta n is basically greater than zero even this is what we could say so now so because of this uh, what we have got but in the previous one we have got that is the delta n we have got it was found to be zero but in this case it is more than zero so what does it uh, uh, indicates or what does it says about so let me give you a certain information so since here we see the delta n is more than zero obviously it says uh, or it indicates that suppose if we increase the pressure so if we have increased the pressure and then we know that uh, and that is a but obvious thing that we know that is if we increase the pressure of a particular uh, on a particular gas then obviously the volume of that particular gas that goes on decreasing so in this case basically if uh, the volume of uh, the particular gas or the reacting mixture uh, at equilibrium it will go on decreasing then it has been observed that the reaction instead of going to a forward reaction it will return to a or it will give us a backward reaction that means uh, in this situation where pcl5 it has been basically it is giving us a, a reversible reaction so as to give pcl3 along with that of cl2 uh, and suppose if we have uh, increased uh, the pressure and if we have decreased the volume then it would be a reverse reaction and we could get that is pcl5 back so that is not favorable to get a, a forward reaction but what happens if we basically if we decrease the pressure we know that if the pressure is decreased then but obvious we know that uh, the volume will increase or whenever a volume is increased in that manner if we talk about so it has been found to know that uh, in this kind of reaction where uh, the delta n is basically more than zero so what we have to do is we have to give a such a kind of condition where the volume is more or the volume it increases so during this kind of uh, condition if we provide then the reaction would be turned into a forward reaction so it is only possible that if we increase the volume or if we decrease uh, the pressure then the reaction would be favorable towards a forward reaction so this is what i am mentioning over here so if forward reaction is observed whenever we decrease the pressure and if we increase the volume so this was one of the uh, conditions that i have mentioned about so now let us move on to the third condition and that is what uh, we'll get to know about uh, the all the three conditions and uh, that's it so let us move on to the next one and that is basically the third condition and let me explain the third uh, example here so suppose if i concern uh, a particular reaction like suppose uh, a combination reaction where we could find that is uh, n2 whenever it, it has been reacted with that of that is three moles of h2 uh, it gives us that is two moles of ammonia 
so again it is a reversible reaction and this is what uh, we could see that a chemical equilibrium has been obtained over here or it has been maintained over here and in this case suppose if we have to find out the value of delta n so again the same thing that we have did in our uh, previous two examples that is um, in this case the number of moles of the gaseous uh, uh, product that we have got over here it is basically two moles so i am writing here as two minus and the total number of moles of the reactant uh, molecules it has been found to be since it is one moles of n2 along with that of three moles of h2 and uh, all this uh, reacting mixture along with uh, the product that we are uh, we are getting over here is basically of a gaseous phase uh, so that's the reason that one plus three in this case it would be found to be that is four so therefore the value of delta and it has been found to be minus two so i'm just mentioning over here as delta n is basically minus two Or we could say that uh, the value of delta n that we have obtained over here is basically less than zero so whenever this kind of reaction happens uh, or where, where we could find that is the delta n value it is found to be less than zero then what is the thing that we could get so there are certain information that we could get and we could basically we could alter the uh, reaction into a forward reaction or a backward reaction we, we should know the particular condition and what is that let me explain you suppose if we increase the pressure so obviously if we increase the pressure then uh, it is but obvious to understand that uh, the volume it will go on decreasing so in this condition basically if we increase the pressure and the volume get decreases then in certain reactions where the delta n is found to be less than zero at that case uh, the reaction will be turned into a forward reaction so therefore this equilibrium or this reversible reaction that we are observing over here it could be turned to a forward reaction i suppose if we have to uh, uh, turn back into a reverse reaction so what we have to do is we have to just uh, decrease the pressure and we have to increase the volume and that is what we could get but let me uh, make a concern towards the forward reaction so the condition that i have said earlier that is what we have to do is we have to increase the pressure so that is uh, if pressure is increased or else we could say that is whenever the volume is decreased so in certain conditions basically at equilibrium obviously according to Lee Childers principle we know that uh, the stress is uh, whenever stress is applied at equilibrium position then uh, what we could observe is obviously the stress has to get uh, reduced so in that position or in that situation basically the reaction will move towards a forward reaction or towards a backward reaction so in this case basically since we are decreasing the volume at equilibrium state so therefore it has been found that is the reaction turns to be a forward reaction so what we have to do is we can say that the reaction could be a forward reaction and it is but obvious to understand that is whenever basically we uh, prepare NH3 that is from Heber's process uh, what we have to do is we have to apply more pressure and uh, more pressure as well as the temperature is also to be maintained and that's what we are we are going to talk about in the next lecture but for a while uh, it should be understand that uh, we have to increase the pressure and in that condition only basically with the help of n2 and with the help of that is 3h2 and at high pressure we could get the ammonia two moles of nh3 and that is nothing but a forward reaction so this was the three conditions that i was talking about and this was eventually a reason that we have got to know that how basically pressure and volume could alter a particular reversible reaction into a particular irreversible reaction that is a forward reaction or a reverse reaction so that's it this is what i want to discuss about so thank you friends for watching this video i hope you have understood this video very clearly and i hope you will share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much